Hello students, in this video we'll introduce the idea of a unitary matrix. We say that an n by n matrix U with complex entries is unitary if U star, its adjoint, U is the identity, where U star is U complex conjugate transpose, the conjugate transpose. Okay, in other words, what this says over here says the conjugate transpose of the matrix is its inverse. U is unitary if and only if U star is equal to U inverse. Okay, great. And so let's talk about some basic properties of these unitary matrices over here, okay? So what are the basic properties of these matrices? So what are some basic properties? Okay, let's do A. So if U is unitary, that implies that U star is unitary. Let's prove that straightforward, right? So in other words, if I did the conjugate transpose of U star, so U star is U conjugate transpose. So if I did U star star, U star star, that's U conjugate conjugate transpose transpose. And both conjugate and transpose are involutive operators, so this is just basically back to U, right? So in other words, the inverse of, so that says that what is, the, is in other words, I know that since U is unitary, I know that U star U, so U star U, is the identity, right? And now I know that U, U star star, U star, which is U, U star, is also equal to the identity. So that says that U star is unitary. Great, all right. So what can I say about B? So if U and V are unitary, that implies that U times V is unitary. And so how do we prove something like that? Proof. Well, I know that U star U is equal to the identity and V star V is equal to the identity, right? And so what can I say about U V star U V, okay? Well, by properties of star, this is gonna be V star U star U V. And of course, inside the identity, so I'm just gonna get the identity, so that proves the product of the unitaries is unitary over here. That's great, it's a very important one for later on. Right, and then also I can I can prove similar things about uh, the complex conjugate and the transpose. Right, so in other words, this is I'll leave this as an exercise, but that's easy to show. You transpose and you conjugate are also unitary by the same argument as part A. Okay, great. Now, one of the most important spectral properties of unitary operators is the following. So here's proposition, and that's the spectrum. So U, U is unitary. This implies the spectrum of U is a subset of the unit circle in the complex plane, okay? And so here's, of course, the proof. So I know that, so if we let X hat be a unit eigenvector of U, then what? Then I know that the modulus of lambda is the modulus of lambda, is the norm of lambda x hat squared, which is exactly just, since it's an eigenvalue of u, it's just u of x hat squared, which is just what? Which is the inner product of u x hat with u x hat, like that. Good. And so now what can I say? Now I can just put the u, uh, so that's equal to, of course, x hat with u star u x hat, but that's the identity, so it's just x hat x hat, and x hat x hat is equal to one by assumption, so the modulus of lambda is equal to one. Great. All right, so in other words, the spectrum of a unitary operator is always on the unit circle, so we have purely imaginary eigenvalues, so every eigenvalue looks like e to the i theta for some value of theta, right? Now, it's important to understand there's a delineation, so it's possible to have an orthogonal matrix where the orthogonal matrix has, now of course, also a consequence of this is one other consequence, so let me write it over here actually, proposition. The determinant 
of unitary matrix has absolute value equal to one, right? And that just stems from the fact that the determinants of the identity is the determinants of u star u, which is the determinants of u star times the determinants of u, right? And so, of course, both those things are the determinant of u, right? So that's the determinant of u quantity squared, right? And that's complex conjugate, of course, right? So um, complex conjugate modules of this thing quantity squared, right? And now, of course, the determinant identity is equal to 1, right? So in other words, the modules of any of these things is equal to 1, right? So that's great. And again, that's a consequence of the fact that these things lie in the unit circle. Now, in particular, what else I can say is the following. I also know that if it's possible by considering matrices that you can have orthogonal matrices that have eigenvalues that are getting very, very large, even though their determinant is equal to 1 in absolute value, whereas with unitary matrices, all the eigenvalues are bounded over here. In other words, that's a very important property that this is true and this is true simultaneously for unitary matrices, but it's not necessarily true for orthogonal matrices where you don't have the complex conjugate. In other words, that complex conjugate is key to preserving the structure, to preserving the boundedness of the eigenvalues. So the, bound, the eigenvalues of unitary matrix are a bounded subset of the complex plane, where if I drop the complex conjugate, I will have a family of, of just orthogonal matrices, and those eigenvalues, even though the determinant is equal to 1, they can grow in principle and get very large. So in other words, they're unbounded if it's just purely orthogonal. So we'll discuss those matrices in further videos. Thank you very much.